Hello, this will be an introductory video on graphs. I will show you some basic ideas such as what graphs are, what some terms mean like undirected graphs, directed graphs and weighted graphs and based on the terms we are going to introduce in this video I will continue on this theme by uh, developing some graph algorithms in future videos. So, what are graphs? Graphs are a simple abstract idea that is used in math and programming to model various problems. I've drawn here for you a graph. Uh, looks like this. And uh, you can see here a graph has two things. It has nodes that I've drawn as little circles, little black circles here, and also has edges that I've drawn as red lines. Um, in, in graphs, the nodes are connected to each other with edges. And uh, you can see here, here some nodes are connected to some other nodes and some nodes are not connected. Uh, we can label our nodes. We can put the number one here, the number two here, for example, and so on. And they, these numbering is usually arbitrary. In this example, we can see that node number one is connected with an edge to node number four. But node number one is not connected to node number two because there is no edge between them. This kind of model is um, <clears throat> useful for various applications. For example, a graph could be used to model a network of cities where the nodes are the cities and the edges are the roads connecting the various cities. Then a graph can represent the road network of a country. Uh, we use the letter G to, um, to, to model our graph and we say that a graph is a pair of two things of a V, of a set V of vertices or nodes which are the little black circles we call these word vertices or nodes and uh, another set E of edges and um, what we do is we um, label our, gra our graph like this I've labeled the nodes here and um, we put we put the various labels for the nodes in the set V so in this example the set V would contain all the numbers that our nodes have. So in this case from 1 through 9. And then our um, set of edges is going to be a set of um, pairs where the two elements of the pair are going to denote an edge. So this is an edge for example that connects node number 1 to node number 4. And I will put another edge as well from 4 to 5 2 to 3, and so on. You can see here that for every pair that we have in the edges set, each element of this pair must appear as a label in the set of vertices. So we might write in a mathematical sense that E is a subset of V squared, where V squared is the set of all possible pairs of nodes. Okay, now um, notice that E is only a subset because some nodes do not connect to others. For example, the pair 1, 2 is not a, an element of the set E of edges. And another notation is that uh, we use the letter N and the letter M to mean the number of vertices or the number of nodes in the graph and the number of edges in the graph. And this is standard notation. We use n to always mean the number of vertices and m to always mean the number of edges. This is quite common. Now uh, here I've drawn some paths in the graph, the previous graph, and um, I want to explain what a path is. And the two paths I've drawn here are the blue path, which is uh, this one here. And this blue path is a connection between node 1 and node 2. But you can see there is no direct edge between node 1 and node 2, but we can follow the edges from 1 to 4, and then from 4 to 5, and then from 5 to 2 to arrive to 2. This is called a path. I've also drawn another path from node 1 to node 2. We start from 1, again we follow this edge to go to node 4, then again we follow this edge to go to node 5, and then we divert and we go to node 6, node 7, and then node 2. So we found two different paths to uh, node 2 
from node 1. So these are called paths, and sometimes we use the symbol uh, little p to denote a path, and a path is really just a series of edges. So we would say in this case that the green path is the, um, the series of edges. Let me just use this symbol for that. And I'm saying that um, I'm starting from edge 1 to 4, and going from 4 to 5, and then I'm going from 5 to 6, and I'm falling through to node um, 2. So you can see that a path is a series of edges. Each edge must belong to, of course, the set E that we wrote previously. And the first pair, the first element of the first pair is the beginning of the path, and the last element of the last pair is the end of the path. So that's a path. Paths are quite important in graphs. And if you think of the example model that I told you about uh, cities and roads, a path connecting two cities means that uh, you can actually go from one city to another by passing through other cities. Now, graphs can have multiple properties. There's multiple types of graphs. Um, the graphs that we saw in the previous examples um, were called uh, directed graphs. So let's go back to one of these. Uh, I'm sorry, these are, these are called uh, undirected graphs. So this is an undirected graph. In an undirected graph, we have the fact that the edges are uh, two-way edges. So in this case, you can go from 1 to 4, but you can also go from, one, uh, from 4 to 1. So you can go back or forth. We can also have directed graphs. I've changed our graph here to make it directed. And in this case, the edges have a direction. In this example, the <clears throat> direction of the edge uh, 1 through 4 is from 1 to 4, but not from 4 to 1. In this case, you cannot go from 4 to 1, but you can go from 1 to 4. So uh, that means you have a valid path from 1 to 5 going like that. So you go from 1 to 4, which is going through this valid edge. And then you go from 4 to 5, which is following this valid edge. However, in this graph, you don't have a path from 1 to 2, because once you reach 5, you cannot go from 5 to anywhere else. If you try to go from 5 to 2, you would have to cross this edge in this inverse fashion, and that's invalid. So this path would be invalid. In this uh, graph, which is a directed graph, sometimes you can have edges in both ways. So there's nothing telling you that you can't have an edge that goes both from 6 to 7 and from 7 to 6. So that would be a graph that has both an edge in one way and both an edge in another way. And we can imagine undirected graphs as directed graphs that have their edges always in, in both ways. So in this case, where we had a, a, an undirected graph, we could um, model the same exact graph by putting edges in all the, putting arrows in all the edges, both back and forth. So if you add all these edges back and forth, it's exactly the same graph, but you've turned it into a directed graph in this case. So directed and undirected graphs are essentially quite similar. And um, just pay attention that you should not cross edges in the inverse direction when you're constructing a path in a directed graph. Another thing to note in directed graphs is that sometimes we can have edges from a node to itself. So it depends on the problem formulation, of course, but sometimes you can have that. So in this case, I've created an edge that goes from 7 back to 7. And depending on what the graph is used to model, we can uh, include or not include such edges. Uh, one final thing that uh, I want to tell you about the graphs is that you can have sometimes uh, weights on the graphs. So until now I've showed you unweighted graphs, meaning that uh, there are no weights on the graph, but sometimes we can have weighted graphs. In a weighted graph, what happens is you put a weight on each edge. So I will use a different color for that. <clears throat> uh, let's use blue. And what I will do is I will write some numbers on the edges. So this edge is 2, this edge is 2 again, this is edge 0, this is minus 1, this is 5, this is 6, and so on. And every edge has a number. And now this makes it a weighted graph. And you can see the numbers can be the same, they can be different, they can be positive, negative, or 0. And that's what we call a weighted graph. And in this case, I used integers for the weights. So I said, okay, the weights are going to be in Z, 
But sometimes you can have uh, graphs that have only positive weights, so they are in N. Or sometimes you can even have uh, rational or real weights in the, um, in the graph, depending on the problem formulation. And in a weighted graph, what we do, uh, what we do to model the, the weights is we create a function, the weight function w, and what this weight function does is it takes an edge as input and it tells us the weight of that edge. So in, in this case, uh, it will map each edge into a number and the integers. So that would be a weighted graph. Um, and um, <clears throat> one last thing that I want to show you is in this particular graph we have um, this shape here where we can construct a path from a node to itself. So in this path we went from node 2 to node, uh, well I didn't, I didn't number them here but let's say to node 5 here and then from node 5 we went down to node 6 here and then we went to node, uh, let's say, 8 here. And then we went back to node uh, number 2. And you're seeing here um, a direction in the path. While this graph is undirected, I am crossing the edges in a particular direction from 2 to 5 and not from 5 to 2, so the path does have a direction. If there are such, such paths in the graph, we call, we call these uh, circles. Um, so if there is a cycle in the, the graph, um, then that means we can go from one node to itself through some other nodes. So there's a path from a node to itself, and let's write it out, it's a, it's a cycle. And these are significant in, in certain graphs. They have a certain meaning in some graph models. This was quite an introductory video on graphs. We didn't do any coding or develop any algorithms, but based on these ideas, we will create our first algorithms in the next videos. If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Questions and suggestions are welcome in the comment section below. Till next time, so long.